Good evening, folks. I know you see me away from my normal location. I wanted to come down and uh, call the meeting to order at this point. Uh, I have a special presentation, but we'll call the meeting to order, and we'll ask the Honorable Mayor Bobby Herndon to lead us in our prayer, and right from the prayer, we'll go from the pledge. I want to welcome everybody to the council meeting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of opportunity. We can come out and decide the business of the city. Just put on these uh, councilors' hearts the, the way, the direction that you would have them to lead our great city. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for loving us. Always be with our military, our police, our fire, our first responders. Be with all of the employees of the city of Northport. Thank you for everything that they do to make our city great. Thank you for our 25,000 citizens. Thank you for the participation in our city as far as uh, the shopping, the, the North Port first, as far as keeping the money in, in North Port to help out with our, our finances. Just thank you for blessing us and everything. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus Christ. These things we ask. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Mr. Collins, call roll, please. Councilman Sullivan. Here. Councilman Sims. Here. Councilman Harper. Here. President Logan. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Folks, the reason I am lower level, I wanted to uh, ask Mr. Dana Higdon to come up. He's with the uh, Tuscaloosa County School System and the uh, Patels, Jay and Roshan. Please come on up, guys. Uh, Councilman Sullivan and myself, we, we actually of course, we met the Patels a couple years ago when they <coughs> renovated the C-Mart gas station right on 82, and they have been the type of business owners that you like to see in Norport. Of course, they pay all the taxes. That's one good thing. But they always keep a clean store, and everybody really patronizes the business here in Norport. But in the course of speaking with the Patel family, we thought about ways to partnering with businesses, and what better way to partner with businesses than our local school system. And uh, Roshan, I'll let you kind of explain what we're planning on doing as far as partnering with the city of Norport. Hi, my name is uh, Rashawn Patel. Um, basically, we have a business down the road, and uh, it's a C-Store gas station. Um, this is something that we've wanted to do for a few years, but we just haven't had, you know, uh, haven't been financially stable, but we have been for the past year. Um, so what we're going to do is work with uh, the Northport Fine Initiative, or sorry, Fine Arts Initiative Program, and because um, I guess uh, their budget, they don't really uh, receive too much money. I know they get some from the uh, city of Northport. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is for uh, every single gallon of uh, gasoline that we sell, we're going to donate a portion of that to uh, to this program. So over the course of a year, we plan on, you know, doing about six to $8,000 uh, for our first year. So. Awesome. And, and again, that fine arts initiative, if you don't know a lot about it, the city of Norport, I guess, and, and Scott, you tell me the year we started that. What year was that? Uh, it was 2002. 2002. Uh, we basically give for music and fine arts and things in, in our elementary schools inside the city limits. And the Patel family, they knew that they wanted to invest back into Norport and help with our uh, elementary schools. And, of course, these dollars will probably go a long way with Norport schools. And they are very adamant about trying to make sure that we develop the workforce <coughs> and our kids in our elementary schools. Again, Danny, you got anything to uh, add to it? I really appreciate the uh, kind donation. Uh, it will be money well spent. Again, again, Norport business owner, we didn't come. They actually come to the city council wanting to do this. So, again, I, I want to thank the Patel family and thank Danny on behalf of the county school system. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Item five is the approval of the agenda, ladies and gentlemen. In our pre-meeting, we had a standard meeting, very short in our pre-meeting, so that being said, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as printed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sims. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Harper? Yes. Motion carried. Item 7A1 is unfinished business. It's a second reading of an ordinance amending Article 3 regarding lost and stolen property. Mr. Davis, this is basically a second reading of an ordinance where it relates to evidence that our police department 
has confiscated that is not city owned and that's basically establishing a process regarding how we process and the protocols to uh, get rid of lost or stolen property is that correct that's correct sir i'll make a motion to approve that is there a second 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 by councilman sullivan any questions or comments Hearing now, Mr. Collins. President Logan. Yes. Councilman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Sims. Yes. Councilman Harper. Yes. Motion carried. Item two is a second reading of an ordinance authorizing the sale of real property. Mr. Collins. Mr. President, members of council, Mayor Herndon, as you're aware, at our last meeting, um, we had a first reading of an ordinance authorizing the sale of what we typically call the, the Boys Club property. It's actually the property is located at 700 and 808 Bridge Avenue. These properties ha have previously been surplused, or actually the 700 property has previously been surplus. The 808 Bridge Avenue property is declared surplus with this action. Um, the sale is for an amount of $1.2 million. There is a nine month um, closing period for the purchaser to do due diligence. At the end of nine months, the uh, purchase would either go through or not. If the sale does go through, the developer would have five years to develop the property in accordance with agreements with the city. If during or at the end of the five years the property has not been developed, the city can repurchase the property for the original sales price, or if in the future the property owner, regardless of if it's developed or not, offers the property for sale, then the city can purchase the property at the sale price that we have before you tonight. Nothing has changed in the agreement I have for you of just described from what was offered at the, at the first reading, and it's staff recommendation that the sale be approved. Thank you. I make a motion to approve that ordinance declaring certain real property located at 700 Bridge Avenue and 808 Bridge Avenue a surplus and authorizing the sale of the property. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Sullivan. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilman Harper? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 8B1 is a resolution under new business declaring certain items as surplus and authorizing a proper disposal. Chief Marshall, these are basically three items. Uh, turnout gear, we got an old vacuum and some other odds and ends as far as an old desk that we might have acquired in some of the, your uh, cleaning out efforts. So again, these are items that have used, reached the useful life. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Mr. President. All right, I'll make a motion to approve that resolution declaring certain items as surplus and authorizing a proper disposable. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Harper. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Harper? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item two is a resolution declaring certain items as surplus and authorizing a proper disposal. Mr. Ingram, these are six pipe horn utility locators that do not operate as efficiently as they used to. We're just going to dispose of these as, as recommended. Is that correct? I'll make a motion to approve that resolution declaring these items as surplus and authorizing a proper disposal. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Harper. <coughs> Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Harper? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Motion carries. Item C is our consent agenda. We have 12 items. They range from minutes of the previous meeting, PO requisitions, and travel and training for various employees of our PD and various departments. Of course, we do have a PO requisition for our water treatment plant. We've got some condensation in the attic, and to do that effectively, we have to make sure that we uh, get the condensation in order as well as a PR valving pumping issue that is causing some surging in our water system. So to do that, we must make sure that we get the water pumping station study completed with Krebs Engineering. So those are 12 items. Again, I'll make a motion to approve that consent agenda as printed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Harper. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Collins. President Logan? Yes. Councilman Harper? Yes. Councilman Sims? Yes. Councilman Sullivan? Yes. Motion carries. Item nine is reports of special committees to council. We have none to report. Item 10 is public <coughs> hearings. We have none on the agenda. Item 11, city administrator's business, Mr. Collins. Nothing for you tonight, Mr. President. Item 12, departmental business. We have none to report. Item 13, public comment. I see two citizens signed to speak. I'll start with Mr. Lewis Coleman, Jr. Come on up to the podium, sir. State your name and address for the record. Yeah, there you go. Hello, how you doing? Good, good. 
My name's Lewis Coleman. I'm a resident right behind you at Biscayne Hills, 3902. And I was just uh, concerned about the park as far as if you do develop it, if we're going to still have somewhere where the kids can develop they, themselves. Absolutely. So that's about it on my end. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Yeah, I think uh, – Thank you for coming up, and I, I remember I used to play ball with you before I, before I got short. I used to be tall. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. But uh, I, I think councils already have a plan to try to address the. Once we sell the property, we'll put those goals in a place where everybody can use it like it has been. Because I think everybody can agree. If you ran across Norport as you first come in, it's a ton of kids there, a lot of inclusiveness, and that's what we want to see. No incident. So yeah. By, by I think everybody here can agree we'll probably be replacing those goals at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Work on your game for the summer. <laughs> Second citizen, Mr. Jody Jobson. Jobson, I live at 1534 Bellwood Lane, and all I've got is a few questions. Um, I believe, I'm getting old, but the city council and the uh, board of adjustment and everybody else up on highway 69 there's a development going on called uh, glen coast glen crest or something like that and he wanted to hook on and come through the the forest glen subdivision y'all told him they couldn't do it well he's opened the road up there and he is now using glen forest glen to go in and out to take his trucks and everything else I just wondered if y'all knew, and if you did, why did you let him after you told him you couldn't? That's a good point. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll verify it if that's all right. That'd I, I will we'll definitely verify it. Uh, the next question I have is, Mr. Collins, you said last meeting that you didn't have to be a citizen of Northport to be on the board, I believe. Which board? Any board, like Civil Service Board, Planning Zoning Board. No, sir, I've okay. never said that. You didn't say it last last council meeting. No, sir. You the uh, I, I, I misunderstood, but but I brought up the question of why all these why are you not appointing people that live in the city of Northport? And I did a little research, and <clears throat> I can remember when Jerry Umber was on one of the boards of Northport. And he moved and built a house in the police jurisdiction and asked if he could finish out his term. But y'all, the city council said the lawyer told him no. Y'all replaced him with Mr. Garner on the civil service board. Later found out Mr. Garner lived in Tuscaloosa. So why, why are you not appointing people that live in Northport? I, don't, I have no problem with Flora Gay being on any board in Northport as long as she worked here. She, she's knowledgeable in everything. But there are other people that you're appointing that don't even live here. And the citizens of Northport deserve to be able to voice and vote on certain issues <coughs> without th that concern them rather than somebody else that doesn't live here. So if you check into that and find out, I'd like the answer to that. I can answer your questions now. Okay. Um, the, the appointments go, civil service board members are required to live in the city limits of the city of Northport. Planning commission members are required to live in the city limits of the city of Northport. Zoning board of adjustment members are not required to live in the city of Northport. Okay. All of those appointments um, on the civil service board and the zoning board of adjustment are made by the city council. The members of the planning commission by Alabama code are appointed by the mayor with exception of one member of the planning commission, which is a city council representative voted on by the city council. Okay, you answered my question. Uh, do we we have a radio tower outside the police jurisdiction in Northport, or in the police jurisdiction, or our Lake Lurling Road somewhere out there? Do we have a tower out there? We are do. We, are we patrolling that because of of we're thinking that the tower is in danger, or what? Why are we patrolling it? Tell them what, ask, ask the uh, question. Uh, car patrolling. Patrolling where, sir? Uh, Lake Lurleen Road. Uh, 
we, we offer assistance to Lake Orlena because Lake Orlena is requested that we provide that assistance. That's a part, uh, that's a partnership that we formed several years ago and we provide that partnership continue as a part of our lease with Lake Orlean for the installation of the tower on Lake Orlean State property. Okay. Uh, the last thing I'd like to request is a copy of, of this year's audit. Uh, do you, uh, who did that? Uh, LaCroix Hunter. Okay. Now, we, the, this year's audit would actually be the 2014 audit. The city's on the fiscal year calendar year which would be January 1 through December 31. The 2015 audit uh, obviously is not complete the year just ended. We do have the most recent fiscal year, which is ended December 31, 2014. I'd be glad to make a copy of that for you. Okay, does that, that show the salaries and the base rates of everybody? That, no, sir, that, not in a, Our, not in a audit. Is the city uh, uh, a citizen allowed to get a copy of the salaries? I've, I've never released those. If the city council wants us to release those, I, I would adhere to what the city council directs me to do. Okay, I'd like to have a, I'm requesting a uh, release of all the salaries of every salaried employee within the city limits, I mean, with, that, that work for the city of Northport. And I want to thank y'all for his promptness on the ditch, Mr. Davis, and uh, came down a day and told me that there was nothing y'all could do because it would be illegal for you to cut a ditch that was an easement, so I, I thank you for the promptness on that. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Item 14 is mayor and council members' business. The Honorable Councilwoman Judah Hayes, of course, she is not here tonight. She had a conflict, uh, couldn't be here tonight. Uh, District 2 under my business, thank you, Patel family, again, for doing business in Northport, and thank you for partnering with the city and, of course, the uh, county school system to provide and add value to our Northport Fine Arts Initiative. I think those dollars will really go a long way in our city limits and uh, we're really looking forward to the continued partnership. So thank you for being in Northport. Thank you. Uh, and again, Coral Industries, if you haven't gone by there, of course, it's at the near the intersection of Fifth and Black Warrior Parkway in Northport. They are continuing with construction. Those jobs should be uh, well received. So if you hadn't been by there, I suggest just go by there and kind of see the progress that's being made at the uh, new Coral Industries location. So. Again, some jobs coming to Northport on that one. Uh, District 3, Councilman Sullivan. Just one thing, I just want to thank the Patels. I uh, appreciate the partnership. I'm looking forward to that. And thank you for all you've done and you're going to do for the city. So looking forward to that. Um, thank you. District 4, Councilman Sims. I have nothing. Thank you. District 5, Councilman Harper. I have none, Mr. President. The Honorable Mayor Bobby Herndon. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of things. As always, I appreciate the hard work and all the efforts of all the employees of, of the city of Northport uh, for what you do to make our city great. Uh, also, our fiscal year, as we talked about a little while ago, ended uh, December 31st. And uh, I've said many times how I appreciate people shopping in Northport. I know the year ending 2014, our sales tax revenues was up three percent that might not seem like a, a, a lot but that's a lot this year our sales tax ended up three and a half percent over what it was last year uh, which means that I said people are shopping Northport more uh, we we really appreciate it it helps out everybody uh, to completely change the subject I know I've mentioned to council at the, the last pre-meeting and um, you know, here a while back, I had commissioned a a group to do a study of salaries across uh, the state as far as cities our size, and they came back with a report. Um, and of course, the council can do with that as they wish. What I would like to see, uh, as far as the mayor, whoever the next mayor is this year at election time, that they not have to pay out of their pocket. Uh, like I do as far as for fuel, truck maintenance, things like that, because it gets pretty expensive, especially um, the mayor's in such demand as far as meetings, uh, different cities, different functions, uh, that I would like to see whoever the next mayor is have a $5,000 a year transportation allowance that could pay for his gas, could pay for or her gas or truck maintenance. Uh, whatever it is, but I would like to leave that to the council's discretion. I know either tonight or the next meeting is the last time that we can vote 
on that because you have to uh, get it done six months before the election. So if it pleases the council, I want to throw that out there. I don't want the next mayor to have to be out as much fiscally as, as I've had to be out. So I have to leave that to the council, but I propose a, a $5,000 a year uh, transportation allowance for the mayor's office. Thank you, Mayor. Item 15, ladies and gentlemen, is adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, by Councilman Harper. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy your evening. <laughs>